Hello, I'm Rips, and this is another Linux gaming video. You'll notice today we're pl we're playing something a little different than usual. We're playing Borderlands 2. Now I know you might be saying, "Hey, Rips, I thought Borderlands 2 was a Windows-only game," and you'd be right. But I happen to be playing this in Wine, a Windows emulation layer. This is an awesome method of playing Windows games in Linux. It basically acts as a, a compatibility layer between Windows and Linux and it allows Windows programs to interact in Linux. It's very useful. Although you'll find that you'll be hit and miss with whether some games work well at all or maybe with some caveats. Borderlands 2 happens to be a good example of it working well. Um, in fact, I get almost the exact same performance I do in Windows. In fact, it's even better in some places. But that isn't actually the topic of discussion one of the day. We'll be watching this and playing, and I'll be playing in the background, but I'm recording this after the fact because I wanted to discuss something that's happening in the Linux community right now. Right now, if you've been paying attention to any of the Ubuntu blogs from various um, members of the Ubuntu community, and the Ubuntu developers, there's a little bit of a strife going on right now. Um, now, this isn't exactly the first time that there's been arguing going on within the Ubuntu community, but there happens to be some pretty bad ones going on right now. And it happened to be started because Ubuntu decided to create their own graphical display server called Mir. I guess I'll start at the beginning by explaining the history of graphical servers in Linux. The, about 20 years ago, um, X11, well, it was just X something, I think X6 was created. Um, and it's it, over a short period of time, it upgraded all the way up to X11, and that was pretty much the final version. And that was, I don't know, 18 years ago or so. Um, and ever since then, it's just been, we, developers and various people have been just cobbling together various things on top of that core to run the display server. Um, and it's, for the longest time, it's worked. Don't get it wrong. It was well designed and it worked well for so many years, far longer than any other piece of software has for that period of time. But it's starting to show its age now, especially with all the compositing Windows managers with fancy effects and trying to play these games on these servers is becoming difficult on the aging core x11 core so a uh, five years or so back um, the uh, development started on a new display server called Wayland and soon after it became a full-fledged fully developed project Ubuntu had promised, or specifically Canonical, the um, the company backing Ubuntu, had sort of made, I'm not sure it was a promise, but they had claimed that they were going to use Wayland to replace the X server in future versions of Ubuntu. And I think this has created a bit of a problem now that they decided to backpedal on that statement and they're creating their own. Um, this has kind of angered various segments within the Ubuntu community and an outside of the Ubuntu community in the larger Linux community because it seems like they're dissing Wayland for reasons that are either misguided or they're not explaining very well. So it's creating a lot of friction and anger. It is also probably centers around other issues surrounding Ubuntu especially since it's no longer strictly a desktop OS anymore. Um, Ubuntu was originally created as a fork of Debian, and it still technically is a fork of Debian, um, that uh, basically was meant to make installation of Linux and usage of it easier so that the average normal person could use it, uh, not just some techie geek. Now, this... Ubuntu's kind of separated from that original image. They're working more on branding and touch and mobile devices now. And they're trying to have this 
confluence of multiple devices that works off of the same operating system. Your desktop, your phone, and your tablet all use Ubuntu and are perhaps even the same device. You just connect different peripherals to it. And it's a great idea. However, this isn't exactly the goal of certain segments of the Ubuntu community. Some people don't give or care about it. And the developments that Ubuntu has put towards their mobile and co mobile confluence confluence techniques and API and stuff like that aren't really suitable for other desktops like the Z the XFCE GNOME Shell and KDE folks don't really think they're going to be able to work with Mir or at least not anywhere near as well as they would with Wayland. So there's this fear going around that. Ubuntu is basically having it their way or the highway. And there is some merit in this discussion. Because it's becoming more and more like um, Canonical is wanting to create their own in-house desktop and software and not really telling other people when they're making, their, making a version or if the development of that version um, is going to be compatible or that stuff. There's, it's just a general lack of communication, I think, is what's at fault here. Now, I had been considering for a very long time, way before any of this stuff started, of uh, about not using Ubuntu anymore and switching to Arch Linux. The reason for this is because I have really stopped using Ubuntu or at least the unique Ubuntu software in my day-to-day -day computing. My day-to-day um, -day computing I use XFCE and GNOME Shell. XFCE is a ba basically a very lightweight GNOME desktop. Um, and I, I, I never really liked Unity. There's a couple pieces of Unity, like some of the indicator stuff and the HUD that I kind of like. I never really liked the dash. I always find it a little ugly and cumbersome. Um, nor the, and I, I kind of like the dynamic workspaces in GNOME Shell. And I like the performance and, e you know, classic and ease of use of XFCE. So I don't really even use Unity or True Ubuntu anymore. So it seemed like, why am I still using Ubuntu? Well, the short answer to that is that is that I actually do some Ubuntu software work. I um, I release software into an Ubuntu PPA, and I still, I still consider myself a good deal part of the Ubuntu community. But it's I'm using specific U Ubuntu stuff less and less, and I kind of want to try and stretch out maybe. That doesn't mean I'm abandoning Ubuntu or their stuff, or do I not, or do I completely disagree with their plan and their ideas? It's mostly because I want to basically try something new. I've been using Ubuntu for over about seven years now, and I think it's time for maybe a a change to see if maybe I can do something better somewhere else. Um, it's getting a, I'm getting a little feeling a little too you know, crowded in the Ubuntu community. There's too many people now. The signal to noise ratio is difficult to get a word in in any conversation, especially if you go to any of the IRC channels. You try to go to um, hash slash um, um, Ubuntu um, channel, you'll try to, um, it's just so much noise from people wanting help that it's difficult to even try and help some of those people in those support channels because there's just so much talking. Um, so I've decided to try and move to a, a nice friendly community like Ubuntu, and, but is a little bit smaller and has, well, it's, I haven't looked too round. It was, I was either going to go for Fedora or Arch, and the only reason I chose Arch is because I wanted the. Tr I am my first Linux I actually used was actually Gentoo, 
which is pretty similar to Arch, as in that it's you don't install pre-compiled packages. You in you actually download the source code and compile it on your local machine. There are some benefits and downsides to that, which I am not going to discuss here. But I just wanted to try something like that, not a a binary pack distro like Ubuntu or Fedora, at least not yet. One of the hard things I'm having to come to terms with about where Canonical has decided to go with abandoning Wayland and picking up Mir is that I think this might slow down um, the general graphics development in Linux now. Um, I think a lot of Wayland developers and other developers were really hoping that Ubuntu would start using Wayland so that more users would use it so they would get more testing so that and because of the popularity of Ubuntu that hardware manufacturers would write better drivers for Wayland since Ubuntu is writing their own display server and is already pushing Nvidia and AMD to write drivers for it it, I, it, it might divide the resources and attention that Wayland could have from these manufacturers is what I'm afraid of. So, if Mir does end up winning this little war, as far as it comes to graphics performance, I might switch back to Ubuntu and start using Mir. But I suspect that it will take many years before either Mir or Wayland is, e is actually even at the same performance that x11 although it is an ancient little black box of code eh, I still think that x11 will be um, having a better gaming performance for several years to come so I just want to make this little video to express some of my thoughts I'd like to maybe comment or if you want me to clarify some thing I didn't explain too well go please please leave a comment I'd like to know um, I might continue the series of Borderland 2 um, if you want to see more of me playing it I recorded a great deal more than this I didn't do any commentary at the time when I was playing it and recording it but I can easily just add some afterwards so thanks for watching have a nice day. Bye.